Hello everybody and welcome back to an all new episode of On The Fly here at Unleashed. I am your host Katie DeFeo, let's get into it. Now let me start with a quick story this week that kind of leads me into what we'll be talking about. Last week I was going for a drive here in North Texas, north of Dallas to be exact. A nice cool January morning in North Dallas, I get to my destination, I park my car, I pull out my phone, I see BCW Lex has posted. I see that they are posting about their seven All-Americans, inside lacrosse All-Americans, but one name was missing. I thought I was gonna see someone that I didn't see. We'll get to that a little bit later before I get ahead of myself. That's what today's video will be about, ladies and gentlemen. Inside lacrosse, IL, IL Women, friend of the program, friend of Unleashed, they released their preseason All-American rankings. There was a first team, second team, third team, and honorable mention. As we start to build towards this hype of this new collegiate season that we're all very excited about, the 2022 season, I figured that I would take a look at that list, uh, which I did, and give you guys my three just overall reactions right off the top. What I think is exciting about All-American lists in the preseason is that you get to see who were the preseason All-Americans, preseason players of the year, preseason to wartime finalists, preseason you know, championship picks, and then what we get to see at the end is how it all played out. Who really rose to the test? Who really stepped up to the plate, uh, as they say in baseball? To check out the list, the link is in the description if you guys wanna follow along at home. Number one, like I just said, that story that I began to tell. Boston College, obviously they're gonna have a ton of All-Americans. You know, these teams that we see recruit well, um, that develop talent well, they're gonna just continue to have recognition in terms of individual awards. So we see seven All-Americans on this Boston College roster. Each of these seven girls obviously deserves to be an All-American. And there's no disputing that. But what I do dispute is why not eight? Why not add this one girl? But the one glaring mistake on that list to me is you add an eighth, and you know who that eighth is? You know who the snub was, who didn't even get honorable mention? Is goalie Rachel Hall. Guys, it is no secret that Rachel Hall is a friend of the program, a friend of Katie DeFeo's. But what objectively, she's one of the best four goalies in collegiate lacrosse, objectively. Take my friendship with her out of the race. Rachel last year was solid throughout the season. Started the season strong, had a solid season. But when it mattered most, through the title run, through BC's title run, where they won the ring, as we all remember, we were all there. We were outside, Towson, Maryland, 2021. Who won them that game? Obviously, it's a team sport. Across the team sport. You would be remiss if you forgot to mention Rachel Hall's performance in the Final Four and in the National Championship game. I get it. Charlotte North is lit. I get it. Bell Smith, lit. I get it. They have one of the best teams in the country, obviously. They have one of the most well-constructed rosters in all of the land, that's no secret. But Rachel Hall stood on her head. She stood on her head throughout the second half of the season last year into the playoffs and through the championship. Let me take a look at some stats. Let me back these up with some stats. Started all 21 games, 18 and three record. 11.18 goals against average in the most competitive conference in all of college women's lacrosse. Named to the 2021 NCAA tournament, all tournament team, as I mentioned, heated up as the season went on. All academic selection for the ACC. Lacrosse is played on the field and in the classroom, ladies and gentlemen. We are student athletes. Preseason All-American honorable mention last year, right? So then she does all these great things throughout the season, heats up at the end of the season, like I mentioned, peaks as they're entering the playoffs and holds that peak, right? She made 11 saves against UNC, the most high-powered offense in the country last year, in the national semifinals on lacrosse's biggest stage. That was her second most recent game, and we're not gonna put her as an, even an honorable mention going into this next season. I'm sorry. Make it make sense. It's one of those things, make it make sense for me. Maybe I'm missing something. I don't think I am. I don't think I am. I think Rachel Hall's one of the top three, if not two goalies in the country, I'll say it. I think you go stat for stat. Rachel and the other goalies that are on this list who are phenomenal goalies. They're all phenomenal goalies. We're blessed with great goalies right now. The game of women's lacrosse is in good hands, as I like to say. You can have a player be a preseason All-American in 2021, meet all those marks, have a solid season, have that season peak, into playoffs and then lead your team to a national championship and then not make honorable mention even the next year. In my opinion, she should be third team, second team. I just don't know how, if there's gonna be a progression there and you're gonna reward great players for great performances. I think that Rachel Hall needs to be on this list. She needs to be on this list. I, I Rachel Hall, if you're watching this, I believe in you and I, I'm rooting for you as I always have been these past four years and you're gonna prove them wrong. And it's so funny that you know, one of the best goalies in the country could be like, haters are my motivators, but like, apparently you have haters. Apparently you still have people to prove wrong, which is baffling to me. You've proven me right all these years, Rachel, so thank you very much if you're watching. That's my number one takeaway from this list. Rachel Hall, where is she? She belongs on the list. My next takeaway is just North Carolina in general. Oh my goodness, are they loaded. I talked about this in the last video, but UNC last year graduated one of the most talented and successful senior classes. Um, in the country, right? We saw that. They all left, they graduated, they got jobs. We're very happy for them. Many of them are playing in AU. The fact that now, a year later, they lead the nation in the amount of girls they have on the preseason All-American list. They have nine preseason All-Americans. Nine. 
There are 12 spots on a lacrosse field and North Carolina has nine All-Americans going into the season. That means nine out of their 12 starters, theoretically, in any given game, are all Americans, are, are among the best in the country at what they do. That's insane. That is insane for a team that graduated so much talent last year. I mean, I said it last week, I'll say it again. I don't know how North Carolina, they don't rebuild, they reload, they revamp. They're just, they're never going anywhere. It's very obvious. Let's take a look at some of these names. Jamie Ortega, lit at lacrosse. Olivia Dirks, lit at lacrosse. Ali Mastriani, lit at lacrosse. Emma Treasure, Taylor Marino, lit at lacrosse. Guys, they have five on the first team. North Carolina, five All-Americans on the first team. Oh my goodness. Kerrigan Miller is an assistant coach, what? North Carolina is gonna have another special year in Chapel Hill. They're gonna have a great time in the ACC this year. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to watch North Carolina women's lacrosse this year. I really can. Nine All-Americans, let that sink in. That is an absolutely outrageous number. These UNC girls aren't underclassmen. They're all older players, they're all experienced. These aren't gamble picks by IL women. These are girls that we know are gonna produce. They're preseason All-Americans. They'll all end up being All-Americans, I guarantee you. The youngest girl that is on first, second, or third team is Caitlin Wurzberger, a sophomore who's like the best recruit in the history of the freaking game. Like, she's not gonna not do well. They're all gonna get theirs. They're all gonna be All-Americans at the end of the season. Potentially, will they be holding a, a championship trophy at the end of the season? I'm not a betting girl, but like, I would bet that they'd be at least in the game at the end of the year. Gosh, aren't we lucky. Nine All-Americans, North Carolina women's across. Jenny Levy, how do, you, how do you do it? My last reaction to this list, just reading down the names, reading down the schools, the graduation years, is just, seriously, I know this sounds corny, but how lucky we are. How lucky we are. Look back two years ago, COVID ended a season. We didn't know when the next lacrosse game would be played. That's a very scary, scary thought. How lucky are we going into this season that we have so, there's so much parity among these rosters. There's so many girls on so many different teams that are all Americans, that are preseason all Americans. I mean, you have, they're representing so many different conferences, so many different teams. Each team that has a girl representing them on this list has a legitimate shot at a playoff spot this year and has a legitimate shot at moving forward. Obviously, we hear, we're gonna hear a lot about North Carolina, Syracuse, Boston College, Florida. We're gonna hear a lot about those teams, right? That's just how it is. They're the best teams in the country. They're the top dogs. But what I really think is gonna be the truth this year is that I don't think we're gonna see as many blowouts this year in women's lacrosse. I don't, and maybe that's my third hot take of this, of this whole video, but I really, I don't think we're gonna see as many blowouts. I think we're gonna see exciting finishes. I think we're gonna see overtimes. This is a very solid, solid, solid list. There are girls on this team that have proven to the country that they are winners, that they're gonna get their stats, but they're also gonna help their team win. I'm just excited to watch women's across the season. I know it sounds corny. The ACC will be playing everybody again. Obviously the Big Ten will be stepping out of their shell playing everybody. We'll have the Ivy Leagues back. We'll have people like Kyla Sears back on Princeton. I mean, this is just, it's everybody. It's the whole, it's like a family reunion this year, the 2022 collegiate women's across season. Ladies and gentlemen, those are my three hot takes. Thank you to Inside Lacrosse for doing all the great work you guys do for, for providing this list for me to give a gut reaction to. We appreciate it here at Unleashed. If you guys wanna check out the list, the link is in the description down below. Comment below your, your hot takes from this from this list. Let me know what you guys are thinking. UNC is absolutely gonna be insane again. Rachel Hall belonged on that list, and I don't think that the gaps between the great teams and the good teams this year are as wide as people think. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Katie DeFeo. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you next week.